Camden Frontier Redskins in the house. Give him a hand. Good to have him here. Oh, it's exciting to see Coach Warfield back again Yay. for another tour of duty. Coach, how are you? I'm great. How are you? All right, let's talk about this, okay? okay. Uh, two years ago, Morgan graduated. Yes. She's going to Siena Heights to play ball. You yes. said You're like, I can't be two places at once. You decided to retire yes. from coaching. Now, how difficult was that decision then? Were you torn about it, or you were pretty firm that you wanted to walk away at that point? No, I was pretty torn because... I had promised some of the girls that, um, why am I going to cry, <laughs> um, that I would stay. Right. And for me walking away, it was tough because right. I knew I was breaking some hearts. Um, but I'm here, so. So you decided, you decided to step aside. I did. You wanted to be able to go to all of Morgan's games. You I knew did. how much time was going to be. And, and, and the other thing, too, is Morgan doesn't just play basketball at Siena Heights. She also plays softball. Yes. So you're trying to be at all of this stuff all the time. Yes. And coaching basketball at the same time is going to be difficult. So I know it was a tough choice for you. How tough was it those two years then when you weren't on the sidelines? I hated it. Yeah. I hated every minute of it. The, the best part was is the basketball wasn't taken away from me because I had Morgan, I had um, her college season. So it wasn't actually taken away from me, so I still had that love there, but not coaching, it killed me. <laughs> I think there's a misconception sometimes when coaches coach their kids. I talked to Rick Bailey about this a long time ago and a few other people. Uh, the idea that, well, you're just coaching because you want to coach your kid. I mean, you love coaching your kid, I'm sure. But at times, coaching, I, I experienced this with football. Coaching gets into your system, mm -hmm. and it's something that, that you can't replace with anything else in you life. Can't. And you so, can't. when you're not doing it, you really miss it. Yes. And it's really not just about coaching your kid, it's just it's not. coaching in general, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It so is because I think, you know, when you have the love and the passion for something, it's there no matter what. And, and I have that, and I love coaching, I love being with the girls. and. I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity to come back. And you're coming back at such a cool time. It is I mean, awesome. this next four years is going to be really, really exciting. And uh, I have a lot more to say about that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I have a lot to talk to you about. Okay. So you're off for two years. You're yes. following Morgan around. Uh, obviously, uh, they had some up and down seasons and mm -hmm. all the rest of it. Were you able to watch CF basketball during that time? Did I you watched, watch any of their games? I think I came to maybe three games last year, and, and I was able to watch them. It wasn't uh, overwhelmingly emotional for you, or you, were, you didn't feel that weird about it or anything? Um, the, first, the first game that I went to was really hard for me because, you know, I coach a different style, um, and it was, diff it was very difficult for me. Um, then the next two, I, it wasn't as difficult, but I missed it even more. Like, I just felt like when I was going and when I had the opportunity to go and watch them, it was just more difficult for me to, to walk out of the gym mm -hmm. afterwards. Now, when you retired or when you walked away, you had no expectation at that point that you would be back so soon or maybe that you would ever be back. Did you think that that was it, that you would never do it again? Um, I did think it was it. I, I did not think that I would go back. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to coach, but I didn't know if right. it would be at Camden right, or, right, right. or what. I just knew it would be in, you know, further off in the future after Morgan was through with college. So two years go by, uh, Mandy heads back to Will Carlton. She gives up the position down there at Camden. Um, the first day that I heard Mandy wasn't going to come back, uh, I heard the name Alyssa Warfield uh, uttered around the school. And by the second day, it was a foregone conclusion that you were coming back. You know the rumor mill and all the rest yes, of it. Yes. So how did this work out for you? How did you know that it was going to be open? Uh, did somebody come and approach you about coming back, or did you apply for it? How did that work? Well, Mr. Riley had um, told me that it was open, and um, he several times said to me, don't put away your whistle, don't put away your whistle. <laughs> and so I knew that was um, something that was that was there, you know, um, and I had several parents on me about coming back and trying to make it work. And um, so when it came open, you know, Mr. Riley said, okay, we have to go through the, right. through the hoops. So we just went through the hoops and I was hired. So you had to formally apply and be interviewed yes. and all of that stuff. There's a foregone well, I conclusion. I wasn't interviewed, but yes, I had to apply. And why would they interview you? I mean, they know, they know what they're getting. Uh, so 
you, you had to apply, they got back to you and said that you had the job. Now, again, you had to make that calculation. It's going to be difficult because of Morgan, or did you know that there wouldn't be a lot of conflicts and that it would work out? I didn't. At the time, um, I didn't have Morgan's schedule. And when I talked to Mr. Riley, you know, I just said, you know, for two years, I have, I have an obligation for Morgan. You know, mm -hmm. I cannot. And that was really hard for me because I'm the type of person that if I'm going to make my practices and everything for the girls um, to be accountable, I need to be accountable too. Um, so I was hoping and praying that the, when the schedule came out, the first part of the, um, the col college season, the games are kind of in and out of dates. Mm -hmm. But after the first, or at, at the first of the year, the games are only on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So I knew if I got past this first you know, couple of months here that we would be okay. And it ended up that, that when I was talking to Mr. Riley about it, he just said, you know, if you will come back, I will cover you, Mr. Follis will cover you, someone will cover you if you need to be gone for that game. You know, and the fact that uh, Scott Riley and Mr. Follis and all the rest of it were willing to work with you on that, they had to tell you that you were wanted. Yes, that they were willing did. to work with you and knowing how important it was for you to be at Morgan's Games. You know, last weekend, uh, my wife tells me every weekend what I have to do, and she said, this weekend we're going to watch Owen play this tournament at Siena Heights. I'm like, all right, let's go. Oh, yeah. By the way, you can't get to Siena Heights from here. We drove like, there's like 50 turns that you have to make, and then you finally get on campus. I could not get there right now, and I was there on Saturday. <laughs> uh, but we finally found the campus. We, we parked the car. We're walking across the campus. Here's this huge banner of Morgan Warfield in the middle of this camp, I'm like, oh, my Lord. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. She's doing awesome. great. She's doing great. And a lot of our listeners remember watching her play both all of the sports, mm -hmm. uh, especially basketball mm -hmm. and softball. But uh, her basketball career is really doing well. How, tell us how she's doing. Um, she is doing phenomenal. Um, she made the varsity team as a freshman. Um, she played in every single game as a freshman with a lot of minutes. Um, as a sophomore, she started um, every game last year as a sophomore. Um, I think she's broke three records oh, at Siena. Um, she's, right now, she's currently 43s behind the all-time at Siena. That record's going down. And she has two more Yeah, two she, more that years, record's so. going to fall. So she's doing great. She's and, doing great. And softball, she, you know, I know I talked to her last summer a little bit about this. It's tough because there's some overlap there just is. trying to get into softball, right? Well, she's a pitcher, and right. pitchers need to throw year-round. Right. And Coach Sue doesn't want her throwing year-round. Understandable. You know? So we, we struggle with that a little bit, but she plays shortstop when she doesn't pitch. So she's okay with it. Um, it just hurts the team because they only have three pitchers, and Morgan's one of those. So you come back and you have your first, you know, you have your first official practice. Now you'd had contact with the girls, obviously, but that first official practice, when you have to put a practice schedule together and get out there and do your thing again, even for practice, were you a little nerved up for that coming back? I was back? so nervous. <laughs> I was, I was so nervous. I actually, I probably had a couple of weeks worth of of practices already written up because I was just so geeked about mm -hmm. coming back and. You know, just having those two years off, it really gave me the love and the passion back. You know, because it is tough coaching your own child yep. and, and the ups and downs that you go through and the rumor mills and the covering each other's backs. I needed that time. I needed that two years because, you know, I have a great group of girls now yes. and it's, it's just so rewarding to be able to come back. So you have your first practices, you work your way into it. Did you feel, because I know when I came back and did that year of football, a couple of weeks in, or a couple of days into it, I felt like I had never left, really. It was just kind of all comes back to you. That's probably how you felt, too, right? It did, until the first game, and then I was nervous because <laughs> I thought, am I going to be able to think on my feet right. like I did a couple of right. years ago? So talk about that first game. You're back mm -hmm. on the sideline. Did it hit you then during that first game when you're patrolling that sideline again? Baby, I'm back. Um, a little. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, it was different because... It's a different. It's a different group of yeah. girls. Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's. I, I think I'm a little bit more mellower. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure these girls would agree with it because they never had me at my crazy right. crazy time. Right. But. Um, but it's I early think, in the season too. Yeah, it's early. <laughs> <laughs> 
Melissa Warfield is the head coach down at Camden Frontier. We're at the Broad Street Downtown Market where they're featuring a perch dinner with fries for $11.99. Remember, Broad Street is open Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Pittsburgh. I love this because you went to Pittsburgh. Obviously, you have a deep connection with them. I do. You're coming in with Kendall and uh, Haley here. Yes. And uh, all of those great freshmen who we've known for a while are going to be really, really good. Mm -hmm. And, oh, by the way, Pittsburgh has a loaded freshman class, too. Mm -hmm. And so we're set up now for the next four years of some epic battles. You have to get your popcorn and your seat early mm -hmm. to watch these games. Definitely. I mean, for you to have that connection again with Pittsburgh... I think is sensational. I'm excited, and it you've got to be too. It is. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, I grew up with you know Chris Hodis mm -hmm. and um, you know Mike Berger married my best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, she was my maid of honor. You know, so it's just there's a deeper connection than just basketball over there. And there are going to be some great basketball games in the next four there years is. between those two teams, and even beyond that. Um, I'm going to put you on this. But when do we play Pittsburgh? Is it a while yet? We play them two. There's. It's actually within a three-week period. Okay. They're one of our last regular season games, so it's three weeks prior to. So about the beginning of February and the end of February. So you don't see them until February. Yes. So you've got a long time to tune up yes. before you take on the Wildcats. Yes. Uh, you said that one last thing, and then we'll bring some of your team in. You mentioned that your style is a little bit different from what Mandy was doing. Every coach has a different style. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... How, how do you feel like you have changed what they were doing? And, and describe your style. What do you want your kids to do on the basketball court? Well, I focus a lot on defense. Mm -hmm. um, I focus so much on the little things. You know, we work on tons of footwork. You know, even in our boxing out, when we're in practice, you know, I'm, I'm constantly saying, it's your foot. You know, where's your, your footwork needs to be here? And we do a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff with footwork. And it's... It's just something I think that kind of goes to the wayside a little bit. Um, a lot of coaches just focus on, you know, shooting lots and trying to get the score off of that. But I, I really believe that your shots will come in the game. And um, so the defense is a huge part for me. Coach Melissa Warfield back at her station at Camden Frontier High School as the head girls basketball coach. We're going to talk to some of her players coming up as the timeout show live from the Broad Street Market continues on WCSR. And uh, Melissa, this young lady is special because she is our only senior this she year. She is my only senior. Tell us about Emily. Emily. Actually, I had, um, Emily was part of our program when I was still there. Um, Emily played um, on the JV, and then I brought her up to varsity during districts. Emily's always been a point guard uh, for Camden, and with uh, Kendall Cooney's uh, point guard skills coming in. Emily is now my new shooting guard. Oh, okay. Yes. So Emily has a little role uh, change this year that she's not quite 100% um, confident with that I'm telling her that she is now a shooter instead of just a point guard. Um, but she's doing a great job in the transition. She is gaining that confidence every single day. She's gaining more and more confidence to shoot the ball. And she's just a great leader on the floor. She has such a good attitude this year. I don't know what it was last year. I'm not meaning it was bad. But she just has such a great leadership um, about her this year that she's going to do really well for the team. Emily Kirk, uh, thank you for being here tonight. I know you're busy. You had the Pat Patterson lunch early today. How'd that go, by the way? It was really good. Now, who are we playing in the Pat Patterson? Do we know yet? Um, Hillsdale Academy is first. So we'll face the Academy first and then move on from there. What's it like being the only senior on this team? Um, I like it. It's just a big role in leadership, but it's really good. Do you feel that because you are a senior that you do have some maybe extra leadership responsibility? I think anybody can be a leader at any grade level if they work really hard, and I, I know that you do. But as a senior, you know, for you this is a special year because this is it, and you want to win every game that's possible, don't you? Yes. Um, I've been a leader for a couple of years now, and like, so it's getting easier, but it's a big role. It's funny because the class of 2014, we have so many great kids down there at Camden that you're the only girls basketball player of that class kind of blows my mind, but you're the, you're the only one. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I'm glad that you stuck with it. <laughs> uh, what's it been like transitioning back to Coach Warfield? Uh, obviously, you had her when you were young and now she's back. What, that, what has that transition been like? Um, it was different, but I definitely missed her and I'm glad she's back. 
Absolutely. And and playing shooting guard is is different how? How do you how are you trying to adjust to that new position? Well, I was always a point guard and I really never shot hardly. And I always drove or I passed the ball right. and that was pretty much my main thing I did and so now shooting is just a little different. Knocking down triples, right? <laughs> Couple. Keep keep knocking them down. <laughs> Kelsey McNeil, uh, come on over, Kels. Um, Kels is an animal, and I mean that in the best possible way. Kels, you can go ahead and hand the mic over to her. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Kelsey McNeil is one of my favorite players because she she's such a nice kid off the floor, but when she's on the court, she wants to basically kill you, and that's the way that you play, right? Right. I mean that in a good way, right? You're just super competitive. Where do you think that comes from? Um, I've always had the competitive drive, and I just like to work my best and just do everything I can to get the win. You know, the rebounding last year was it was really special, and, and you were getting double-digit 12, 13, 14 rebound games every single night. As you come into your junior season, how do you want to continue to grow your game? What are some things you want to get even better at as you get older? Um, I definitely want to work on my dribbling. That's probably my biggest struggle out there and working on my defense a lot. We mostly focused on offense last year, so this is a big transition. And on the offensive side of the ball, what's your role on the team right now? Um, well, we... I mean, do they, are they running play? I guess my point is, are they running plays for you down low where you're supposed to catch and shoot around yes. the paint? Yes. And how's that going? You got it? Um, yeah, and it's definitely a confidence boost knowing that I have Haley on my other side. Right on. What about that? I mean, Haley's going to be a dominant big in this league for a long time. I think we all know that and see that coming. Uh, to have her the next couple of years is going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? Yes. And let's bring her over. Actually, let's do Casey first, and then we'll bring Haley up. All Casey right. Fallis, everybody, is, is a junior on this team. Casey, how are you? I'm great. You went through what Morgan went through in that your mom's the volleyball coach. And yeah. we've already talked about this before, having your mom as, as your head coach. Is, is got some awesome parts about it and could have some struggles for some people. You really see it as more of a blessing than anything. Yeah. Now you're switching back to Melissa on basketball. How's that transition been for you? I love it. I've always wanted Mel to be my coach, and she feels like sort of a second mom. So I've always loved her and always wanted her to be my coach. Dave Fallis basically insisted that she come back. Uh, I talked to him about it a couple of times. Some people thought your dad might end up taking it, yeah. but he wanted Melissa all along, didn't he? Yeah. He, he loves coaching JV, and he knows that if Mel wanted to come back, she wants varsity, and I know how much she missed it, too. So So what's your role on the team this year, Case? Um, she has me outside shooting and sometimes more posting now in case Kelsey's out, so, yeah. You're draining threes. You're knocking down buckets getting out and playing defensively. And I know defensively is what coach works on so much at practice. A lot of that is being in great shape. And I know yeah. you, I, I've heard, I haven't been at your practices, but I've heard there's some running at practice. Yeah, there's, there's enough running for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get great uh, position and running the floor. You, you had, uh, you had a, a tough game against Reading, but bounced back and, and got the win the other night. How fun was it to win that first game of the it year? It was great. It wasn't just a good win for us. It was a good win for our coach because it was our 100th win. And it was a great night. She's won 100 varsity basketball games. Yeah. That is amazing. And I, I can't believe that she quit when she only had 99. I know. Like if you were one away. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Uh, let's bring Haley over. Thank you, Case. Haley Lawson, uh, I, I remember your dad, Randy. Uh, we were all afraid of him. And uh, he was huge and intimidating when he played at Waldron High School. Uh, now he has a daughter who's a freshman in high school. How much do you take after your dad's game? And how much has he told you about his uh, glory days at Waldron? Well, I hear about his glory days in Waldron a lot. <laughs> 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 and I take after my dad quite a bit, and we're always in the gym working and, you know. Your dad was angry on the floor. Um, he, he wanted to not just, he wanted to demoralize you when he played, and, and he did have an attitude. Do you, do you have that same kind of uh, attitude when you're out well, on the floor? I'm not really quite all there yet with my attitude. Right. I've been working on it. It's just one of the things I really don't take after of my dad. You know, I think there's a lot of pressure. I, I don't think it's fair, but it, it is what it is in high school sports. From third, fourth grade, everybody knew that you were going to be really good. Yeah. And so... Now you're in high school, you're a freshman starting on a varsity basketball team. Do you feel a lot of pressure with that or have you been able to just kind of take it all in stride? 
Well, I mean, I feel kind of pressured, but I know, like, I won't have to be the only one out there because right. I have all my girls out there helping me through everything. That's a great way to look at it. And also, what an opportunity to, to start for four years and, and, you know, God willing, you stay healthy that whole time. You're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's bring Kendall over. Uh, she's another freshman. And uh, Kendall, I guess I can ask you the same question. You and uh, Haley have been kind of a unit, uh, played a lot of ball together, not just for Camden Frontier, but uh, outside of the school as well. And do you feel you're ready for this moment as a freshman? Um, I feel like I'm ready, but I also feel like I just need to keep working as hard as I have been to improve, because there's always room for improvement. And I just have like a lot of motivation to just keep getting better. Yeah, it's such a good it's such a good attitude because you find out the older you the the older you get, the more you realize you don't know. And I think you understand <laughs> you're mature enough to understand that as you keep getting better, you'll you'll see all of the things you can continue to do to help your team win games. I like something that you did over the summer. I talked to Mr. Riley about that. He's the principal down at Camden and an awesome basketball player. You guys had a chance. Some of your teammates had a chance to work out with Mr. Riley and take advantage of what he was able to offer. What gave you that sort of motivation to work that hard over the summer? Well, I just um, I take like all the opportunities I can get to get stronger and like better in my sports. And I thought it was a great opportunity for a lot of our girls to just keep improving. And I just think it's a great thing to do for anybody. The point guard on every team is kind of like the quarterback. And it's a big job. And you're out there, and, and everything's kind of running through you to get everybody in the right play, to control the ball, and not carelessly turn it over. So what's it been like through two varsity games? That jump from eighth grade to varsity basketball has got to be a big jump. Yeah, I was very nervous, <laughs> especially our first game. I thought I was going to pass out, but I made it through, and um, I realized that I can hang with all the girls and that I became more confident in myself, I think, and... And it's just up from here, right? going to get yeah, better just, and better. I can just get better and better. You know, every practice, every game, you're going to be more and more comfortable, and you'll be old hat at this by the end of the season. Congratulations, yeah. too, by the Thank way. You. Let's bring Coach in as we wrap it up with the Redskins here. Uh, Coach Warfield, uh, not only are these kids tremendous basketball players, but each and every one of them handles their business in the classroom. You don't have to worry about kids showing up for practice or eligibility. So from that standpoint, to have this kind of high character group has got to be a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. They're great, great girls. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not just good in the classroom, um, but they're very respectful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they truly want to listen and they do whatever I ask them to. They're just great, great girls. They're just a lot of fun. And as you look on into the season, we talked about the, the coming up rivalry with Pittsburgh, I think. What are some other games that you have? Obviously, every game is hugely important. Uh, but what are some other those big league games, maybe teams that are expected to be good that you're looking forward to? Actually, I'm kind of going into this a little blinded. Right on. After yep. not being around for the last two years, you know, I'll hear a scouting report on, an, on someone's name, and I'm like, who is that? You know, I, mm -hmm. I just don't even know who it is. So for me, it's, it's really just a matter of taking every single game as being absolutely important and just going from there. So when's your next game? Uh, we play tomorrow at North Adams. CF at North Adams tomorrow night. Yes. 7 o'clock? 6 uh, o'clock? JV's at 6. JV's at 6. Varsity's uh, usually 7.30. Good luck to you. Thank you very and much. thank you so much for being here. Congratulations. Thank you for it's us. good to have you back. Thank you so much. Uh, coach Melissa Warfield, now 100 wins as a high school basketball coach. Uh, we want to thank uh, Coach and the Redskins for coming out tonight at the Broad Street Downtown Market. We'll take another break. When we come back, Martin Peterson and Rick Arsenault are here. We're going to talk about this Detroit Lions team. As much as I hate to, we've got to talk a little Lion football. It's next on the Timeout Show. <laughs> 